Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone watching the 76th live program in Orthopedic Principles. Today we have a special edition and it's a symposium on valence surgery. We have a spectacular lineup of speakers from across the globe, Prof. Ganal Lalonde from Canada, Dr. Alistair Phillips from Southampton, UK, Dr. Constant from Cyprus, and Dr. Amir Adam Ahmed from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Without much ado, let me introduce you to our first speaker, Dr. Constant. Dr. Constant was born in Athens, Greece in 1979. He graduated from the National and Capod History and University of Athens Medical School in 2005. Dr. Critias completed the Cypria orthopedic training rotation in various hospitals across Cyprus before moving to Birmingham in 2012 for a fellowship in advanced hand surgery under Dominic Power. Following the completion of his fellowship, Dr. Critias immediately found a local consultant post in the Royal Cornwall Hospital in Truro. He carried out working in various parts time part-time local consultant post across the UK and is currently working in Sunderland Royal Hospital and in EAS's private hospitals in Paphos, Cyprus. The Corinthians obtained the prestigious European Diploma in Hand Surgery in the FESH meeting in Paris in 2014. His super specialist interests include reconstruction of the spastic hand as well as functional reconstruction of the upper limb in suitable to heteroplegic patients. He's a very keen volunteer and almost all of his practice is well based. He is presented internationally and published on the previously mentioned subjects. Over to you, Costas. Thank you very much for the kind invitation, Hitesh, to present to you today. Um, I will speak to you about how to set up a Wallan service and how to utilize Wallan more in this COVID-19 era. So this is a picture of how I spent uh, yesterday afternoon. I had a glass laceration of the hypothena reminence on a young 23-year-old. And uh, I explored him under Wallan and I had to repair the ulnar nerve, the ulnar artery, and the three flexor tendons, and all of this was done under Walland. Um, some of you may wonder why I should bother with Walland. Well, it's very cheap to utilize, it's very efficient, it's very convenient, it's safe for the patients, especially in these times that we are living in, and with the active motion, you can actually evaluate the outcomes of your surgery right on the table. Plus, built, and involve your patients more in um, what you are doing to them. So my background is that I work in two countries, as Hitesh kindly mentioned. I work in Cyprus and the UK. I run a semi-private practice in Paphos, Cyprus. Patients want to spend as little time as possible in the hospital, especially in these times that we are living in, and 95% of my cases are done under Walland. In the UK, I am employed by the NHS, and we do have access to top anesthetists, but unfortunately, in the COVID-19 era, anesthetists are redeployed uh, to intensive care units and everywhere else. Um, patient turnaround, time, turnaround times can be lengthy, and you, if you can still save money, uh, it's always a great thing. How do you start with Walland? I was first introduced with Wallan through ViewMedi and uh, the videos that Don Lalon published. And I remember that uh, a colleague of us uh, made a very interesting comment back in 2013 regarding fixation of distal radius fractures under Wallan. And uh, Don at the moment mentioned, I'm sure it can be done. And the guy in Malaysia was just <laughs> laughing. <laughs> now, how to climb the Wallan ladder? You don't need to force yourself in Wallan too much. You start off with simple cases like carpal tunnels and trigger fingers, and you continue with more complex cases gradually. If you believe that you can do a distal radius fracture straight away without having any Wallan experience, then you are doomed to fail. You need to be slow. Uh, gradually, you will build on uh, your practice and do more complex stuff but only if you feel comfortable with the technique and only if uh, you know the procedure that you're doing quite well. Because Wallan is about injecting where you're going to cut and where you're going to dissect. Now, a patient's journey in the NHS, we do have patients in the NHS that are going to have surgery. And when they are referred by the GP and they need surgery, they, uh, in order to list them, if they are going to have 
any other kind of anesthesia except from local anesthetic, they need to go through complex preoperative checks. With Wallant, they can be listed for surgery and be allocated the day straight away and even be called in in short notice. So it's a very efficient thing to do. You need to organize your theater. You need to inform and educate your theater team about Wallant. You need to be ready with your local anesthesia cocktails from the morning. You need to liaise with the anesthetic payable ODPs and registrars about the patients that will need IV cannulation and to have them on standby if any problems occur. Involve and inform the patient in the process because the patient will be the star of his surgery and he needs to know that. And liaise with the ward about the LA injections and what to expect when the patient returns from theater. That's my Wallen starter pack. Um, I usually use the things that you see on your right hand side. Every morning that before I start my lists, I put one hand, uh, I put my lidocaine and my adrenaline in a 100 ml vial of normal saline. I usually use 20 ml of 2% lidocaine inside the 100 ml normal saline plus one vial of adrenaline, one milligram per ml. This makes it a 0.4% uh, lidocaine with one in 100 in 120,000 adrenaline, which believe me, it's more than enough to do whatever you want to do with Wallant. The patient flow on the day of surgery, I have modified this slide a bit. We, I like to get my patients in a waiting area to get admitted, consented, and marked, then put on a trolley in recovery and inject it if possible there. This will allow you enough time until you take the patient to theater and start the procedure for the anesthetic and the adrenaline to work. After surgery is completed, the patient can go home straight away. This is an idea that I like a lot, especially in the COVID times. We can do acute hot clinics. It's something that I, we utilize in Sunderland and I utilize in Cyprus as well. A patient is seen and assessed in the morning by the hand surgeon. And if he's fit for Wallant, he can be operated in the afternoon in a non-clean air theater list or a clean air if you need to do implant surgery. If you have something uh, more complex that is not fit for Wallant, you need to liaise with your anesthetist and see how you can slot them in. Now, that's one thing that I love doing in the last two months. Procedures in my office. And when I mean my office, I mean literally my office where I do my consultations and everything. Uh, patients don't want to go to the theater and want to stay as little as possible in the hospital. We know from uh, the work of Don Lalonde and many others that this is a safe thing to do when you do minor hand procedures or soft tissue hand procedures. Uh, from my own experience, I, we did 26 patients since the 1st of April 2020, and so far I had no infections. Um, also, regarding the coronavirus pandemic right now, because we are doing procedures under Wallant, they are not considered aerosol producing procedures. The risk of transmission, therefore, is very, very small. You can utilize minimum resources for surgery and you can keep ward beds empty for any other patients that will need them. This is important because if you have a patient with a distal radius fracture that shows up to your clinic, you can have him uh, fixed and go home within three hours from the time of admission. That's something that I do quite frequently. So you don't keep them in the hospital, you don't expose them to danger, and you keep yourself safe as well. These are some examples of my cases. This is a flexor tendon repair under Wallant. Uh, this is actually now a three-year-old video, it, um, but it shows how nicely you can correct the flexor tendon and how you can bend your pulleys and plan accordingly. Uh, this is a scaphoid non-union that I did under Wallant. I was criticized when I published that on LinkedIn uh, about a year and a half ago, but it does have its uses, and I'm doing another one on this Wednesday on a patient with severe asthmatic crisis that cannot receive uh, general anesthesia. I do find that while and sometimes can be more reliable than regional blocks as well, but this is purely personal experience. 
Another uh, example, an attritional rupture of the FPL. This lady had a distal radius fracture. It was fixed, the FPL broke, and she had an FDS4 to FPL transfer uh, under Walland. This is her outcome at six months down the line, and you can see how beautifully she can flex her thumb and she can pinch and unpose her thumb. One thing that I need to tell you is that in Cyprus, I don't have access to hand therapy. So the patients do whatever they are taught on the table. That's why Walland is very important for my practice. Regarding the safety in Walland, I believe that Walland is much safer than uh, general anesthesia. There was an unfortunate incident in Scotland on a 40-year-old patient who was admitted for a correction of a malunited fracture of the distal phalanx, and he died due to barotrauma from general anesthesia. Even if you are not the anesthetist and you are the surgeon, you are still liable medical legally, in a sense, if your patient gets injured from the general anesthetic. So you need to take that into account. Two further examples. I had a 72-year-old patient who was admitted for removal of a plate from the ulna. She had general anesthesia with a laryngeal mask and she woke up with a recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. Fortunately, she recovered fully, but she was very angry at me and not the anesthetist. And another very sad example was a 39-year-old patient who was admitted for a routine shoulder procedure. The anesthetist, instead of the plexus, in injected the subclavian vein and the patient uh, passed uh, away on the table. Is Walland safe? There is a lot of evidence that says that Walland is safe. Uh, there are uh, lots of publications of, on PubMed. I do have three examples here, but if you do your research on PubMed, you'll find tons more. My experience is that I have done more than 500 major cases so far. Carpal tunnel and uh, trigger fingers are excluded. I never had perfusion issues. Sedation was needed only in four patients, and this happened when I started using Walland. Uh, vasovagal syncope is common, but can be avoided by injecting with the patient lying down. I have, I have always done that, and so far I haven't encountered this issue. And I never needed to use phentolamine. And one of the reasons is that I don't have phentolamine in Cyprus. And thankfully, I never needed it. Procedures that I perform under Walland routinely, I do pretty much all your bread and butter hand and wrist trauma, including distal radius fractures. I do all my wrist fractures under Walland under wide awake now. Rarely, uh, I hate Walland for complex with transfasciectomy, where you'll have to see a lot of structures when you do your dissection, and I'm a bit scared to use Walland here. I'm not comfortable with children in local anesthetic. Don Lalonde will tell you otherwise, and he is probably right, but I am not comfortable with it. And for corrective osteotomies of fractures of the distal radius, I think it's a bit too much. Uh, my personal experience, and this is from the early 2018, and this has been published, is my complication rate, and this has been going down ever since, because the more experience that I get with it, less problems do I get. Um, contraindications, when you shouldn't use Walland, obviously allergy to local anesthetic, a patient that is non-compliant, patients with history of epilepsy. Indeed, I did have one such patient that had a petit mal seizure on the table, nothing serious, and she recovered from it uh, without any issues, but you need to be cautious here. If you have a very stressed patient, you don't need to force Walland on them. Patient, there are patients that are afraid of local anesthetic. You don't need to put pressure on them and you don't need to force it on them because then you will look very mean and the patients will not tolerate it easily. Peripheral vascular disease like Raynaud's phenomenon, I prefer to omit using adrenaline here. I just use lidocaine and obviously pediatric patients if you don't know how to speak and handle a child in this scenario. My recommendations are to perform all surgery in hospitals where crash teams are available. I never used a crash team in my Walland career so far, and this means over five years of uh, cases, but you never know when you will need one. 
In, in patients that will have prolonged procedures in certain IV cannula, you have ready vascular access in case that you need it, and you may also give some additional medication from there. Don't be afraid to use monitoring for longer cases. Know where your fentolamine or equivalent is if you have availability of that. And most importantly, get the patient involved. The trust that you will obtain from a patient when you do him under well and then you involve him in the surgery is unparalleled to anything else. So to summarize and pass uh, the button on to Don, Wallen is a very safe method to perform hand surgery. It can reduce significantly the costs. It can be applied in all hand and wrist surgery procedures, but you should stick to what you're comfortable with. Don't overdo it. Don't um, go beyond your borders. Some resources, um, the Wallen.surgery website that was set up by Ali Phillips is a fantastic example where you'll find a lot of information there. Lots of videos on ViewMedi as well. We are active on LinkedIn uh, with our Wallen Wednesday tag. Uh, but the most important resource is us. We are a good bunch of people as volunteers and we are happy to offer our advice and guidance to anyone that needs it. Uh, this is a photograph from last year's ASSH con conference in Las Vegas. It's very sad that this year we won't be able to get together physically, but hopefully uh, through these webinars, we will be able to sort out something. Thank you very much for your time.